Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, the channel that dares to unlock those mysteries. Yes, all those mysteries of home distilling. Okay, we're glad that you're with us today, and we invite you on this journey because we are going to run this two-inch glass column, and you're going to do that with me. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, yes, let's get right to it. Now, normally what I would do is I would run this thing several times uh, to work out all the kinks and all every anything that could potentially go wrong. Uh, and then we get together and we do a video. Um, but at this time, we're going to do it just a little bit different. Um, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to share with you some of the trials and tribulations you may run into. Uh, I've never run this before, but uh, this could be the first time today, and you're going to do it with me step by step, and we're going to show you exactly how we go through that. And I've already got some challenges that you and I are going to overcome. Now, uh, if you get an opportunity, please, yes, subscribe and share us with your friends. Uh, it's only a fair thing to do. Uh, I asked you that up front because, yes, this is a free publication and broadcast, and all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel. Yes, subscriptions matter on my end, and I do appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who do not understand or don't know, uh, yes, YouTube does compensate us, so therefore it keeps the channel alive. Uh, but they do that based on subscriptions. So subscription costs you nothing. Um, but it does send a signal out to the big YouTube in the sky, and of course, yes, we also get bragging rights, so I appreciate that. Now, um, of course, yes, I've got a lot going on here. Um, it, it, it may seem quiet, but believe it or not, there's a lot ahead going right now because I've got some challenges I have to overcome. Let me describe this for you before we even get started. All right, I've got, of course, I got my kettle. Uh, this thing has been charged for, I call it charged, as in I've already filled it, uh, for about three days. Uh, every time I get out here and I go, I'm going to do that today. Believe it or not, something comes up. Yeah, I'm, I get like three or four orders for PIDs and I have to stop and that's okay, I don't mind. Um, yeah, but it takes all day and I'll build a bunch of those and then ship them out and I go, okay, now I'm ready to go back at it and something else will come up. We're here today and we're going to get this done regardless. I've got probably 150 emails I got to get to. And while this is running and we're taking breaks, I'll go through and get, get to those. Um, but I'm going to dedicate the time and get this done today. So I've got about six gallons in this eight gallon still of a sugar wash that I had sitting in the man cave. Um, and I've got these things sitting pretty much everywhere. Um, I keep them for just such occasions when I need something to put in. It's a sugar wash. Uh, I've got this two inch column now this is a this is set up. You can run it as a pot or a reflux. And remember, what is the difference between a pot and a reflux? And most of you got it. A a pot still just produces the vapor up through into a condenser and condenses that down to a back to a liquid from a vapor to a liquid. Uh, although. It does it at a lower proof. Uh, in, in general, 130, 140 proof is perfect. Uh, it's, it's great. You're, you're successful. Uh, when you have a reflux column or a reflux still, and of course they come in many different varieties and many different designs, uh, the major difference is, is that you have a precondenser, and that's what these cross tubes are. And what that does is it precondenses that vapor before it exits, and that vapor drops back down revaporizes and rises, the most volatile substance rising, uh, and it becomes more pure. So now you're looking at mm, about 180, 185 proof, um, you know, your really high proof um, neutral spirits, okay? So that's the major difference. We're going to run this as a reflux column, and the reason we're going to do that is because we want to see what is happening. Um, and that's the whole total purpose behind a glass column. Um, I have the condenser right here, that, and this is a Liebig condenser, which is nothing more than a smaller copper tube inside a larger copper tube that will draw from out of there, and I've got cold water will go in the bottom and will come out the top, and it will cool this tube inside here and turn that vapor back to liquid, and that liquid will drip out the end, and we'll drip that into our parrot, and we'll start testing proof. But before we get there, 
we've got to make this thing work. And since we've never run it before, I started to do a few little checks in the very beginning and found out that this thing leaks uh, because it's put together rather well. Um, it, Bill King sent this to me. It, uh, Bill did a great job of it, designing this and just and drilling the holes through the glass and, and all the other things. Uh, but the challenge was is that you know water is always going to find a way out if it has an opportunity to. It has these plastic caps on the bottom where the copper goes through and seals inside the jacket. Uh, but they leak. Uh, so under, and not even under pressure, just, I just put water in there and they leak. Uh, so what I had to do was, I went over to my Dremel and there was a collar that was around here and I just, I shaved that collar down to the same size as the pipe. Because what we have to do is we have to resolve that leak before we can go any further because as soon as I put water in this condenser, it just starts dripping out the bottom and we don't want that to happen. Uh, it would probably work, but it'd be a terrible waste of water. So we're going to fix that. Uh, and well, I'll, I'll show you exactly how I fix that. Uh, I've got this, this meter valve, <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure, this is a needle valve, and it's for metering the water. And uh, this thing is pretty unique because uh, it's a push and click. You know, like those shark bites? You just push it in and it, it, and it seals. And then... You depress the blue collar and it comes right back out. So these are pretty neat. And I believe it or not, I don't even know where they come from. But I'm sure if I did some search and I could find it online, you probably could too. Uh, it, but it's a really good needle valve. Uh, now the reason I'm gonna use, what I'm going to use this needle valve for is that I'm going to have water running in the bottom here. and Bottom, yeah, bottom, he, bottom here, I'm sorry, and out the top. And at the same time, I'm going to have a second pump that's going to be pumping water into my pre-condenser. And I want to be able to meter that. I want to be able to control the flow of that. Okay? You don't need to control the flow here. That goes full bore. But you need to control the flow of your water through your pre-condenser. Because if that is too cold, then all of the vapors fully condense and drop back down. And all you'll have is vapor rise, condense, and drop. Fully. Rise, condense, and drop. Uh, it'll never go anywhere. You'll be sitting there waiting. It'll never come out because you've got too much water flow. So we need to be able to adjust that water flow so that we can pre-condense. We just want to pre-condense, which is partial, okay? Partial, pre, a little bit, not a whole lot. And it, takes, it just takes a trickle of water running through there. So, And you'll be able to control it. And you'll see how we adjust that. Uh, you'll notice I've got my air conditioner cooler that uh, I always use with just about any and every still that we run here. I'll have that operational, and I'll probably have that sitting in the back corner because it makes a little bit of noise. Uh, but I chill the water down. I put like 20 gallons in there, and I'll chill it down to uh, anywhere about 45 degrees or so, which is plenty cold, plenty cold. It, you, don't need, you don't need to really go any lower than that. Uh, and what I'll do is, it, since I, I get it that cold because 20 gallons of it lasts quite a while. Uh, and then I can turn the air conditioner off and run that and then when the temperature starts to go up in the cooler i'll just turn the air conditioner back on and cool it back down so you with me so far well let's let's get to fixing well remember my first challenge was the the leaking in this condenser so what i'm going to do is uh, now that i've got these things ground down so that they're the same size as the pipe um I got to thinking, I was like, how do you seal that? Uh, and I did try glue, and I did try hot glue, and I, I tried a bunch of different things, but all of them failed. Um, and I even pulled these out. They, they've got little rubber gaskets right here, but they're just not secure enough. Um, so here is my next thought. I've got some shrink wrap tubing, and here's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, I do know that if I can shrink wrap here, and sh shrink wrap here first and then shrink wrap here that I can get a good seal because this particular shrink wrap has a glue inside of it that and, and these things are rated to shrink three times their size, their nominal size. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these on here. I'll put one here and I'll push this all the way up against here as close as I can because 
I want to make sure I don't have any leaks right in here. And then I'm going to put another one on the outside here, and I don't have any leak there. Let me show you this. Make sure that sucker's hot enough. Okay, I'm going to use a heat gun, and we're going to shrink wrap that and get it nice and tight. It doesn't take a whole lot, it doesn't take long. Now, once we get that done, I've got another piece of uh, shrink wrap. And this one's just about the same size as this pipe down here. And I'm just going to have to, ooh, I don't want, yeah, that's cooled off. Uh, I'm going to slide that on the, right on here. I'm going to slide that on there. And then work that up. You see, see, now you can see why I cut off that collar. And I'm going to slide that up that copper tube so that it seals around that plastic nipple. And also so that it can seal around that first piece of shrink wrap that I put on there. And this should give me a good seal. Now, I'm quite sure a little bit of lubricant in there of some sort might have been helpful, but I was thinking and I theorized that if I put lubricant in there, that maybe that would affect the glue that's inside these shrink wrap tubes. So I didn't do that. And it's probably in my benefit that I didn't do that. So I just got to work this on here so that I can get a good amount there. There we go. See, if you look closely, as I know it's hard for you to see, but you can see a little bit of that glue that, that heat causes to uh, sneak out the top. But I've got a really good seal there. So I'm pretty confident that that's going to be watertight. Now all I've got to do is the other end the same way, and that's what I'm going to do next. Well, I've got it back together, okay? Um, and I did, I was able, I got that sealed. You see, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I, who'd have thunk it? Shrink wrap. Um, and it works really well and I actually tested it. I filled it with water and it doesn't leak. So that's a good thing uh, the, Here's the bracket that comes with it. Um, I gotta make that looks a little bit more level Yeah, there we go. And what that bracket does uh, and it screws on it's a two-part and it just holds that Condenser out to the side and supports it. That's all it is. It's just a support bracket Now you may be wondering how did I get I've got a, a roll of copper in here uh, and I actually added some glass beads well, probably about four inches or so of them. Um, and you might be wondering, how did I get that to stay where it is? And I just used another, hey, let's try to resolve this issue immediately with stuff we got laying around. I got a, a long piece of stainless steel rod because I got a TIG welder. Um, it, so right there in the very middle, I just bent it. And I bent it so that it's, it goes across here and then the two legs come straight down and I hooked little, just made little tiny feet on the bottom of each one, and they connect inside this bottom coupling, and it holds that up, and it also supports the weight of all of those beads. Now, what are those beads there for? Those beads there are as a medium for thy distillate, and it increases the surface area inside my column so that uh, there's a delay. Uh, see, what we don't want to happen is we don't want uh, our droplets to form and then drop straight back into the kettle. We want them to stop somewhere um, so that they can restart to revaporize and cause more of that separation. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to have a delay factor or a delay, delaying function of some sort. And that's what those beads do. Those beads cause that delaying function. Plus, it, it, it's more of a surface area in order for that liquid to start to mull over and then uh, the heat causes it to start doing this separation it, it's a beautiful thing uh, and the reason I have the copper in there the only reason I have copper in there is because uh, there's really two reasons one a lot of you are gonna say you gotta have copper okay so I got copper big deal 
Um, and second is because it's like a mesh and uh, it does a good job of supporting those beads. That's really why it's in there. Um, all we got to do now is fire this thing up. I've got a 3500 watt heater element in here and I'm going to run that on 240 volts and of course I'm going to use one of my PID controllers. So what I need to do now is I need to maneuver this back over there and get all the water and everything set up and you don't need to see me go through that because that's a tedious thing to do. Oh, and just a reference to a couple of comments. Um, I want to make sure I get this out there. For those who think that everything that we do needs to be in metric, um, look, I'm in the United States. Uh, these are free videos. They're worldwide. And I understand that a lot of people use the metric system. Um, I convert as many as I can when I think of it. Um, and some of them I don't. Um, I do the conversion and do the video. Uh, if I don't do the conversion, is it so hard for you to just do the conversion on your end? I mean, I do it. It's not that hard. I, I, it's just a thought, okay? Just a thought. Okay, uh, I need to move this to the other end of the room, and we're going to get this thing running.